Here is a deep time exercise that takes us back into the immensities of our past. We call it harvesting the gifts of the ancestors. As we move back by the power of our imagination through countless generations, we are reminded that the industrial growth society is but a blip in time, a momentary episode and that we belong to vaster reaches of time, the time of our ancestors from whom we descend in unbroken succession. You will notice that we use our bodies not just to sit in a chair and do a mental fantasy, but to literally walk. Our ancestors were goers, walkers and so do we in this first moving back 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 to an imagined beginning point of our human story then forward through time using our bodies as well to gather the strengths and gifts our ancestors have to bestow upon us if we will only remember them and you will see that in order for us to keep moving in this exercise, the room is turned into a kind of turning dish. We move around and there's a hub you'll see, perhaps a stool with a cloth over it around which we turn so that we can keep on going. This is a ritual. There's the explaining part, which I will do now. And then uh, we will dedicate it and uh, begin. So uh, you will all dispose yourselves around the room uh, as if you were taking your place on a wheel. It's a solid wheel. You won't be just in one circle. You will be putting yourself anywhere as long as your right shoulder is to the center, to the hub of the wheel. And you will be moving around, first going backwards. The value in doing this as a uh, in a circle means you can keep on going and going and going. A friend in Germany experimented doing this, just doing the length of the room. But then when you walk the length of the room, you hit a wall. But this way, going in a circle, you just keep on going and going. So uh, place yourselves around the room with your right shoulder to the center. And since you will be circling around this, if you're that close, you're going to make very tight circles. So let yourself stretch out. So you will be um, walking back through time, taking steps with your Uh, with physical movements the movement of the body really makes a big difference because the movement with the music I'll put on and the verbal cues I will give will help to trigger um, images that will arise in you and we're going to retrace our journey Not as life in the universe or on this planet, but simply our life as our species. Our our human journey in planet Earth. So we'll start at this moment and then go back. And you will give you some few cues so that we stay in sync. And then you will hear me ask you to stop. And that's at the hypothetical point of the beginning of our journey as humans. If you can imagine that as a point, but that's what we're doing for the purposes of this exercise. Then you will hear me invite you to move forward. So now you're walking forward, retracing your journey through time. And you will hear me invite you to harvest the gifts of your ancestors. And I suggest that you, it really helps to actually use physical movements and gestures to do this to make it real as if you were uh, taking, harvesting 
uh, grains or fruits that of uh, the, from the ancestors' journeys. Uh, and we come back to the present moment. That's it. It's very simple. Now, as we do that, uh, we keep our eyes half closed so that that encourages images to arise from our imaginations, our racial memories, species memories, and um, but half open, a little light coming through, uh, so that we can get a sense of where we are and navigate. Now, as we move backwards or forwards, we are going to sense people moving around us, maybe even brushing up against us or bumping into us. And if you get into that's fine, because we didn't make this journey alone. Not one step of it. But you might find yourselves in a traffic snarl, at which point you open your eyes, you look around, and you see a open space, and you move there, and then proceed again. So you reposition yourself. I want to acknowledge that uh, this uh, practice was uh, originally taught to me in um, the germ of it uh, in uh, Australia by Friedman and Wieland. And so let us dedicate this. Uh, let, our, let us make a strong intention that the attentiveness and sincerity and strength with which we do this process this journey will equip us and strengthen us and serve us for the work we are called to do for the welfare of all beings. So be it. It's 10.44 on the morning of August 12, 2005. You are at Land of Medicine Buddha in Santa Cruz County, California. And you are going to move back through time. Moving slowly, small steps, but still moving. Move back now through this morning. You will notice in this process that music is very important. Non-programmatic music frees the imagination. You will notice too that I mentioned at the beginning the person from whom I had learned this earliest version of this process. I consider it very important always to attribute an exercise to the person from whom you learned it or who originated it. You will notice, too, that we took time to dedicate the ritual, the exercise, as we have in, in, in many others, like the Truth Mandala and the Seventh Generation. This process of dedication, of clarifying our intention, also is very important because it lets the intention ply so that our estimation of the exercise does not depend on how much we liked it or how it suited us, but because of the intention that we put into play. I hope you will notice that uh, I didn't uh, sentimentalize this journey. I don't want to do that. Our ancestors went through so much. There's no need to sugarcoat it. But boy, we need to remember now certain of their strengths that surely were there as they faced the unknown, faced hunger and hardship, as they built the cultural monuments that we cherish them for as well. At the close, people have had so deep an experience, almost always, every time I've led it, that it is good to let them be with it for a while in silence. And so I ask them to simply stop and to sit down where they stop. 
And then only after several minutes do I suggest that they, if they wish, open their eyes and look around and let their eyes meet another person and move to them to share with words or without words something of what that journey through time meant to them. No pushing. Lots of respect. This remembering of our ancestors' journey is cultural specific. And so it changes with the group you tend to do it with. So you'll be respectful. When I have led it in the Soviet Union, or former Soviet Union now, uh, as I have several times, I've always enlisted a Russian who knows their whole historical sweep well and who can just step in after and guide it themselves. And the kinds of strength that we draw from will certainly depend. And you'll be guided by the cultural and racial and ethnic stories, the heritage of the people that you're working with. 